In my last video, I talked about how DNS works, what it is and how it works. We also discussed the DNS header. These are the fields inside of the DNS header at layer seven, the application layer and the TCP IP protocol suite, and the format of a DNS resource record. This is the record, the information that's returned from a request. You request a domain name and it returned in this case an IP address because the request was for an A record. Now let's take a look at this process using Wireshark. Okay, so this is Wireshark. I've already done my capture. So the main thing you wanna do is open Wireshark. You're gonna set your capture interface, which you can do right here. And there's a screen, the entry screen, you can set your interface. I set it to my wireless network adapter. And then I just hit capture. So I recorded this information and then I put in a filter here that says DNS. So now you're looking at all of the DNS packets that were captured. Now, when I did my capture, what I did was is I opened up a web browser and I went to a website that I have called dalbergetti.com. And this is my website. It's just a picture and some text. It's, there's nothing there really, but it's very simple. I also went to Google and I also opened up a tab and went to facebook.com. So I went to essentially three sites. So now if we look at this Wireshark capture, we can see that. So here is a query for Google and here is a query for my website. And then here is a DNS query for Facebook. And you can see this right here. So let's take a look first of all at the query for my website. So I know this is my query, one, because it says standard query, and it says DNS because I filtered for just DNS packets. Also, I know that my computer is 192.168.8.165, and the destination is the gateway here, the router at 192.168.8.1, because my router, in this case, is also my DNS server. So um, my DNS request went to my DNS server, which is also in this case my router. So we can see it's a standard query. Now if we want more information, we just drill down into this layered section right here. So this is the binary, the byte data, and then this is, shows all of the information separated into the layers. So we've got the link layer here, or the data link layer. On the link layer, data link layer, we have the ethernet protocol here. At the internet layer or the network layer in the OSI model, we have the IP layer, this is the internet protocol layer. At the transport layer, we have UDP. So you can see that this DNS request used user datagram protocol, UDP, source port, this is a random port for my computer, and the destination port, port 53. So that's what a DNS request uses. Then this is the application layer information or the layer seven data. This is my domain name system query. And if we open this up, we can see more information. Now let's take a look at this information. So we can see that we have the flags here. It's a standard query. So a zero here, a zero right here. This is the uh, QR field. This means the message is a query. You've got the opcode field. This is set to zero, which means it's a standard query. It's actually four bits. You have the truncated field is zero. The message is not truncated. A one here on this flag means that this is a recursive request. It, recursion is desired. You have the, the Z reserved field right here and non-authenticated data is unacceptable. This is for DNSSEC, which is not set. You can see also in the header beyond these flags here that there is questions, one question. There's one query. There's no answers. There's no, authoritative an there's no authoritative answer section and there's no additional section because this is a query and these are mainly for the replies. Now let's take a look at the query itself. So here's the body of the application layer request, the DNS request. So this is the query itself. You see here the query was for dalbergetti.com. We want an A record, an address record, and the class is internet. If we open this up, we see just those same fields dalbergetti.com, the uh, length, the count, it's a, a record for a host address, 
and internet class. So now let's look at the response. Well, you can see here that this request was sent, this query was sent, and then a second query was sent. So it was sent twice, but here's the response right here. So you can see here from the source, from my DNS server, which is also my router, to uh, my computer, and it says standard query response. And you can see all of the information right here on this line, but it's a lot easier if we look uh, down here into this window where we can drill down and see the details. So once again, at the transport layer, we're using UDP. The source port is 53, so this flips now. So it's coming from the DNS server on port 53. The destination port is now the random port number identifying my computer. So these got flipped because it's a response. Now we look at the DNS response here. We see some differences here. Let's take a look at them. Under the flags, it's a one because it's a response. A zero because it's a standard query. So the opcode, if it's a one here, it could be a, a reverse lookup. Authoritative is set to zero. This is a non-authoritative answer because the DNS server that resolved this was not the authoritative uh, DNS server for my domain name, for my zone. So it's a non-authoritative answer. Recursion was desired. Recursion was available. Um, was the answer authenticated? No, so zero, zero. And then we have a reply code here. The reply code, four bits, set to all zeros, means that there was no error in the response. So there's your flags in the header. Then we see that there was one question. We got one answer, answer resource records one, authority resource records, authoritative resource records two. We got two authoritative resource records. These are going to be my two DNS servers for danscourses.com. And then the additional resource records, which will be the A records for those two DNS servers for danscourses.com. I guess it's a non-authoritative answer because the DNS server that actually sent the reply back to my computer did the handoff essentially um, that did the uh, that was responsible for resolving the recursive lookup was just the local DNS server and not the authoritative DNS server. Okay, let's take a look at the query here. So there's the query. We already saw the query. We know what the query was but we look at the answers and that should be interesting. So we'll scroll down here for the answers. The answer, the name, a record, and the address. So there's the IP address resolving from this name to this IP address, there it is, name, and there's the IP address. If we look under the authoritative name server section, you can see that this name resolves with a name server record to ns1.m03.siteground.biz, which is my DNS server for my site. My site's hosted at SiteGround. And you can see that there, there was two authoritative uh, answers or resource records. So there's the first one, and then here's the second one, which is ns2, the second domain name server at SiteGround.biz. And then in the additional records section, I'll just collapse this because we, we can just see the shortened version of it. Under the additional resource records, you can see there's a second record that resolves the address record for the name server to IP address and the second name server to IP address. So the first time, the name of the, uh, the name is resolved to the name server. I do wanna point one thing about that. And let's see here, what was it? Oh, well, just that it was an NS record. Um, it was an NS record, and then the second one is an A record resolving to the IP address. I thought I had something to say there, but I didn't. So we have the three sections. We had answer, we had two authoritative name server answers, and two additional record answers. This one had the name to, to IP address. This one had the name to the DNS server host name, or to the canonical name, and then this one is the host name, canonical name, to IP address. Now, if we look at the Facebook one, the Facebook one is a little bit more interesting. Shall we do that? Absolutely. We'll take a look at the Facebook one, 
and it's a little bit more interesting. So with the Facebook one, here's the query for Facebook. And let's see here, we're gonna look here, the query, we want facebook.com and A record, right? So that's what we want. Nothing else here is super interesting. There's no uh, different types of flags, it's just one question. So there's nothing kind of curious about that. But if we look at the response, we'll see some different kinds of information, which is pretty interesting. So under the flags, similarly, a one here, meaning that this is a response, um, it's a standard query, recursion desired, recursion available, this is all the same, no error right here under the reply code. Then if we look, there's one question, two resource answers, two authority answers, and then additional resource records, four additional resource record answers here. So let's look at the query, facebook.com, a record, and, uh, uh, and that was the query, we already looked at that. The answers, that's what we're interested in now, since this is the reply. We can see that we've got that this reply here, um, the C name record. So I was expecting to see an address record here, but facebook.com first, the first answer we get is a C name record or canonical name record. Well, that's interesting. So the first answer is that. We see here, then there it is. So this name, so there's two, it's like there's two answers. The first answer is facebook.com and then the host name here or the canonical name. And then the second answer here resolves the host name or canonical name an A record to IP address. So first we need to resolve facebook.com to the host name that's hosting this service or the canonical name of the server and then that server's A record. So it took two record requests to get that answer. Under authoritative name servers, we're just gonna see the DNS servers for, there's two DNS servers that were requested and we got the answer. So this is once again the uh, name and then the DNS server for that name. And then in the additional records section, we'll drill all the way down here, we see that for addresses, we get this DNS server for Facebook, an A record with IP address, this DNS server, A record, IP address, and then this is kind of interesting, something different. Another same DNS server, but this is a quad A record, and then the IPv6 address. So you can see here, and there it is. See, there's the, um, the server, the quad A record, and then the, the quad A address, which is an IPv6 address. And there's one for each server. So that's why we got four responses. Two of the responses were for two DNS servers, IPv4 addresses, A records, and another two responses for the quad A record. So these DNS servers for Facebook are ready to run IPv6 and they're ready for the IPv6 centric internet. So that's pretty cool. I have a different packet capture here that I thought you'd find interesting because it shows a couple other things that are pretty interesting about DNS. Let's look at this first query right here. Notice this query says PTR, it's a pointer record, and then it has the IP address here, but backwards in reverse. Let's take a look at it. So first of all, under the flags, I was expecting something different here to show it's a reverse query, but it's just all zero, so it says it's a standard query. So, oh well, I didn't see what I was thinking I would see. But there's the question, and then let's look at the query. So this is the um, DNS server's IP address in reverse, and it's a pointer record, and it's basically trying to get uh, the name from the IP address. So this is saying, give me the host address, pointer record. I want the host address for this host, 192.168.8.1. And it's in reverse because the host is identified by the last octet in the IP address. And so this is in a hierarchical way, uh, 192 would be more general and one is actually the host that's more specific. So this is more specific and the reversion coordinates with a domain name where the leftmost identifier uh, is the most specific part and .com, which would be on the right, would be the most general. 
So that it kind of matches that concept. I don't understand all the specifics, but that's what I read. Anyway, that is a kind of a reverse query. Here's the response. If we look at the response, and the response is also interesting, we'll close the query, we'll look at the answer. The answer for this address is the name of the host, which is myportalwifi.com, or you know, that's that's my wireless router here where I'm at. It's a uh, my portal Wi-Fi. So anyway, and you can see here the domain name pointer, right? So that's pretty interesting. Then even more interesting, well, for me it's interesting, is this query right here. I fabricated this query, and um, let's take a look at this query. It's a strange one. So this query I kind of fabricated. The query is for this strange string right here, which looks encoded dot someplace dot com. So that's interesting. So you see here the um, the query for uh, for this address. So that's that's pretty interesting. Now it resolves to nowhere. Someplace dot com. I just picked it. It's actually um, a parked page. You don't want to go to it. It's just a parked page somewhere. It's not something significant. You don't want to go there. But what's interesting is that I fabricated this query. And so if we look at this query and we say, I want to get this text here, we say, copy this text. Maybe I'll throw it into Notepad. So this is an example of possibly data exfiltration. And that is, is when the query, the DNS query, has data in it that has been encoded that you're trying to sneak out of the network. So if I take that string right here and copy it, you say, what is this? Is that a real place? No, it's not. It's not a real place. I can take it to a base 64 decoder and I'll put in the, I'll put in the encoded uh, string of characters here and click decode. And it says, this is a message that is encoded. So yeah, I, I encoded a little string of characters here and I got an encoded string and then I fabricated um, a request by just saying taking that encoded string and just throwing it up here into the browser and then said dot you know someplace.com type thing and then hit go and now the request if there was a if there actually was a DNS server that I controlled on the internet somewhere, maybe I have my own DNS server on the internet somewhere, then this string, which looks like a subdomain, would get that request, would go through the network and out to maybe a DNS server that I controlled, and then all you'd have to do is send a bunch of these in a row and then put them all together and decode the message, and maybe you'd have a file that you were able to um, that you were able to uh, uh, exfiltrate out of the network. And why would you be able to do that? Well, because DNS is a protocol that administrators have to allow, because otherwise if they don't, you know, you're, you're not gonna have, they won't have internet access. They won't have, be able to resolve names to addresses. So DNS becomes an interesting protocol because it's usually allowed out and in to networks. Anyway, I hope you found that interesting. Um, in my next video, we're going to do more with DNS. We're going to use uh, host commands, NSLOOKUP commands, and DIG commands to make name requests.